Brad Stinson here. You may have seen some famous photographers taking pictures with big, bulky, heavy cameras like this and wondered why. Specifically, you may be wondering why there's so many darn knobs on this camera. Well, the basic answer is control. And in this video, we're going to explain one of the elements of that control, specifically how you can keep everything in the scene perfectly in focus, no matter where it is and no matter what f-stop you're using. Let's look at the situation where we have a very simple camera here consisting of an idealized lens and any lens will have an optic axis and the lens will also have a rear focal point and a front focal point. These are the locations where light entering the lens parallel to the optic axis will be focused to. In addition, there's going to obviously need to be some film or a sensor in the camera. And we want to take a photograph of subject one and also subject two. So now let's see what happens when we try to focus on subject number one. We need to locate where the image of that subject will be formed. And what we know is that light leaving subject one and going parallel to the optic axis is going to be bent to pass through the rear focal point. Likewise, light leaving the object and passing through the front focal point is going to be bent to exit the lens parallel to the optic axis. And so the image will form in the location indicated. So to bring that subject into focus on the film, we need to move the film plane to the location of that image. Now what happens with subject number two? Again, light leaving subject number two parallel to the optic axis gets bent to pass through the rear focal point. Light passing through the front focal point will be bent to exit parallel to the optic axis and the image of that object will be formed at where those two rays intersect. And as you can see, that's not where the film plane is, so they will be quite out of focus. But we can correct that by simply rotating the film plane to be coincident with both images. Now look at the geometry that's arranged here. The film plane is shown by this line, the lens plane is shown by this line, and the subject plane is shown by this line. And notice that they all intersect at a common point. And this is a general principle. You can keep everything in focus by having the film plane, lens plane, and subject plane all intersect at a common point. This is known as the Scheinflug principle. And it's named after Captain Theodore Scheinflug, who used it to develop a method of correcting perspective distortions in aerial photographs. Although he's probably not the person who originally invented this method, as Scheinflug himself uh, credits a French engineer, Jules Carpenter, with the rule. Now, normally we think of everything a certain distance in front of and behind the plane of focus as being within focus according to the depth of field. But in this case, since we've tilted everything, that's no, those two boundary lines of what's in focus are no longer parallel, but instead they're wedge-shaped. And so objects near the camera will have a much shallower depth of field than objects far away from the camera. Now we'll see if, how the Scheinflug principle works in real life. The assignment I've given myself is to take a photograph where this lion is in focus and this bear is in focus, but the little cute things down below here are going to be totally out of focus. Now normally we think if we're going to focus on the bear, we're going to get everything in that plane in focus. But to accomplish what I want, what we're going to do is tilt that plane of focus to instead of being perpendicular to the camera, to be on an angle that goes through both the 
bear and the lion. So as you can see, I have the camera pointed generally towards the scene I want to photograph. Now to accomplish what I want, which is to tilt the focal plane so that it runs from the head of the bear to the head of the lion, I'm going to tilt the film plane. So remembering that the bear is higher than the lion and the lens is going to flip everything upside down on the ground glass that I'm going to use to focus. I will first focus on the lion, then I will focus on the bear, and I will notice whether I had to move the bellows in or out. If I had to move it in, then I'm going to tilt the film plane so that the bottom moves closer to the, to the lens. If I had to move the bellows out, then I'm going to tilt the film plane so the bottom moves away from the lens. Then I will go and refocus on the lion, refocus on the bear, again keeping track of which way the bellows move, and make another tilt adjustment. And I'll keep repeating that process until finally I have both the bear and the lion in focus. And as you can see, now I have the lens plane here, and instead of the film plane being perpendicular, it's at this angle relative to the, to the lens. So we're now ready to take the photograph. So we've adjusted the f-stop and the uh, to be wide open to get the minimum depth of field. We've measured the light and it's about a tenth of a second. So we're going to take the photograph. And here is the resulting photograph taken on Fuji Instax wide film. You can see that the bear and the lion are very well in focus, but the two figurines below the bear are totally out of focus. For comparison, the photo on the right shows what the image looks like when you keep the film plane parallel to the lens plane and then focus on the bear. Now let's see if this configuration actually conforms to the shine flu principle. So to do that, I'm going to try to identify both the focal plane and the plane of the lens and the film. Now I'm going to do that with these little pieces of yarn here to try to identify it. So first, let's connect the yarn to the poor bear's little ear here. And then we will drag that piece of yarn all the way over to the camera. And we will fix it on the camera so that the yarn passes approximately where the lion's head is located. Here I've adjusted two yarns to be parallel to the film plane and the lens plane, and we can see where they cross relative to the piece of yarn defining the focal plane. Looking down below, we can see where the plane of the lens, the plane of the film, and the plane of the focus all come together at a common point. Well, that concludes our video on the Shine Flu principle. But remember all those darn knobs we talked about at the beginning? Well, we've only covered one of them, the one that provides tilt of the film plane. In addition, you could have tilted the lens. Plus, there's controls for rise and fall, shift, and swing. All of these can be applied to either the lens, the film plane, or both. These provide a great deal of control over the plane of focus and perspective. And this can provide a great deal of control on the appearance of your images. Those topics will have to be covered in another day. So, until then, thanks for watching.